in this vein of trying to reduce costs and in improve information, is there information that the public can have or should have about how to possibly even prevent some of the environmental causes of cancer? If you look at the World Health Organization in terms of the crisis that's going to happen, the report they've put out, what are called non-communicable diseases, within 20 years they said there's going to be 25 million uh, diagnoses of cancer per year. It's an epidemic, not because um, of one single factor, but many. Then clearly with the pollution, if you look in China, it's almost an existential issue with the pollution that's going on both in the food and the water and the air. If you look at our environmental exposures and the global warming and the, and, the, and the issues that's affecting the ozone layer. And then if you look just at the aging population. So there's no question that cancer is, is not only growing, we're losing the war against cancer. And why we're we losing the war against cancer? Because we've been actually um, l looking at a, a disease that is so complex, uh, it's like whack-a-mole. Um, you hit something and actually nothing pops up. And the poorer you are, the higher the incidence of you getting the wrong treatment. So the question is, how do we change that? How do we actually completely change that where we have some accountability, we have evidence-based medicine, where we have the ability for the doctor that is now inundated with this deluge of information, what's called big data, and cannot address that in real time. So we've built a tool that is now adopted by most of the oncologists in the United States that actually takes these thousands of protocols and takes the patient's pro uh, uh, diagnosis as well as the biomarkers and the history and maps it to the protocol and in real time gives the doctor choices with educational material from where it came of which treatment to give the patient. And if they did that, the insurance company would pay without any question. That tool is now out there. You mentioned that this building that we're sitting in right now will be the largest uh, genome sequencing facility. How will that tie into cancer or other uh, medical disease treatment? So the next exciting wave of cancer care, which I call putting us on the path to the cure, the fact of the matter now, we have pancreatic cancer patients now um, surviving over two years and some patients up five years after having metastasis throughout the body. That is unheard of. Uh, when I developed a Braxane, our nanoparticle drug, um, when I, I went against the dogma of not starving the tumor but feeding the tumor, because what do you mean feeding the tumor? It turns out that all tumors fed on this human protein called albumin so that we would have a drug that could treat all tumor types, whether it be pancreatic cancer, lung cancer, and breast cancer. That was going against the dogma. The drug is approved for pan pancreatic cancer, lung cancer, and, and, and breast cancer which then proved to me that I really just need to believe in the passion that where I think the world should go next. And the way the world should go next is, is that as you treat the cancer patient with your cytotoxic chemotherapy poisons, you're actually affecting the genomic and proteomic profile of the cancer cell itself. So you as a physician are actually changing the cancer cell because the cancer cell's entire position is to survive, to create micrometastasis and spread. So we need to figure out a way to stop the micrometastasis, which we have, and more importantly, we need to find the cell that's now floating in the blood and do the genomic and proteomic analysis so we can predict a priori early on what drug to give before the, it actually gets even worse. It's the only chance we have to be put ourselves on the path to the cure. So we have then built a supercomputer that can do the genomic analysis rapidly. Think about the math. There's 10,000 new cases a day that we need to do these analyses. It takes 11 weeks to do one patient's analysis of the entire human genome. So we built a supercomputer that can do the entire analysis in 47 seconds. So in June, you will be presenting for the first time at the American Society of Clinical Oncology the results of the first 10,000 patients, um, uh, 10,000 samples, whole genome sequencing, and 5,000 patients in which we were able to do this entire analysis in less than 69 hours and provide the information of what drug to give to the patient based on their genetic fingerprint. And that's the future of us uh, moving forward.